Welcome to the podcast, Your Lifestyle is Your Medicine, where we do deep dives into the topics of mind, body, and spirit. Now, through these conversations, you'll hear practical advice and effective strategies to improve your health and ultimately add health span to your lifespan. I'm Ed Padgett. I'm an osteopath and exercise physiologist, and I have a special interest in longevity. Today, my guest is Christopher Mayer, author of the book, Free for Life, a Navy SEAL's path to inner freedom and outer peace. Now, I've just finished reading it. And if you're ready to make some changes in your life that allow you to reach your maximum potential, then this book and what Christopher is going to say in this podcast could be for you. In today's episode, Christopher and I take a deep dive into his journey from being a Navy SEAL, a burnout as an athlete, and to now someone who is stronger and more vibrant at 55 than he was in his 20s. This podcast isn't for the faint-hearted. Christopher's journey has led him to some, have some pretty out-there experiences. Some of these experiences, the rest of us would only hope to have with the use of hallucinogenic drugs, and he has them completely clean. And with that said, you may find his words become the first step on a life-changing journey. Now, for others, they might just be entertaining. Whatever you think, you'll agree that he has a very unique perspective on health and healing. Now, you can find Christopher at truebodyintelligence.com. Now, without further ado, let's get over to the episode. So, Christopher, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here, right? Man. Lifestyle for me is the answer. So, your 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 choice your brand name makes a lot of sense for me exactly and that's why i'm so excited to have you on the show because you're more than just lifestyle what we'll get to your lifestyle but also you help people with this new well new maybe not be the right word but you've packaged something into something that is new for most people so can you tell us what is it that you do here's what i do i have two things that i do okay and the, the i work with people privately People come to see me and we go through a five-day process, right? I see them twice a day. And during that time, my job is to investigate them first to figure out why they're really there. Most people walk in the door with like, I'm here because of this, this, and this. Hmm. And then that that's what their personality understands about them. And then I have to get down in and figure out why are you really here? Okay. Hmm. I, the, the the pain in your back might have been the bait to get you here mm -hmm. right the the divorce with your husband right the addiction to the marijuana that might have got you in the door but why are you really here mm -hmm. okay and then we spend the first day really investigating so that they can set up a really powerful intention because for me what i've learned along my journey is that, that intent is everything and I'm into allowing the person's intention be the driver for what we're going to be co-creating together. Okay, so this is a bit different than somebody's going to come, they're going to lay on the table. I'm I'm going to run I'm going to rub some massage oil on them and 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 hum some mantras and no, this this is this is not what's happening. What's happening is true transformation. So mm. in order for that to be true, it has to be guided by them. So I get in the passenger seat where before, when I first started working with people, I was in the driver's seat and I was going to take you where I thought you needed to go. And then one day I heard a voice that said, hey, listen, we're going to do this in a different way. You understand how to do things now. Now I need you to let me be the guide. Mm -hmm. And I thought, okay. And what spirit asked me, was like, all I want you to do is ask them some simple questions and use those questions as your driver to meet their intent that's it they're the driver you're the passenger mm -hmm. and i thought well this is a strange position to be in i have been in this position before but okay if this is going to produce 10 times the result i'm into it and guess what happened the results were far greater the impact was far greater because i was a, i was staying in my lane mm -hmm. And so that's why when anyone says to me, oh, I read your book, you're an amazing guru. I said, no, 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 no. I'm a peer. I have some tools 
that I promise you will be helpful and useful to you. We're peers. Yeah. Okay. I'm a teacher. I'm an educator. All right. I have some skills, but the point is you're the driver. You're the guru. All I have to do is show you how to apply these tools and you'll figure out how to implement them best into your life in a way that works for you. Mm -hmm. I love it. And so as we, as we finish up that five day process, what's the first thing I have to do? I have to turn on their upper brain. What does that mean? I have to get their brain out of a lateralized state of function. So electrically, if we laid down every human on the planet, we would find that all of them, okay, have one hemisphere that's turned on and they have one hemisphere that's turned off electrically. Mm -hmm. Well, guess what happens? The opposite side of the body turns off electrically as well. Okay. And there's a process called teaching through testing to be able to, to be able to establish that. Then after that, I have to be able to turn on their lower brain, their emotional brain. Well, guess what? In, in Qigong and Tai Chi and traditional Chinese medicine, they talk about these specific channels. Well, you have 12 primary, but then you have four extraordinary. And four extraordinary channels are associated with your appendix, your thymus gland, your brain, and your sexual organs. So the brain and the sexual organs, the brain is for electricity, the sexual organs is for magnetic energy. Well, what are humans made up of? Electromagnetic energy. So I turn on the upper brain and then I have to turn on the lower brain so that this person can locate themselves in time and space. So all humans who have one hemisphere that's turned off electrically and their emotional body is turned off, okay? They are in a state of suffering. They're struggling. And they don't need to, because if your brain is turned on, your analytical mind and your emotional brain is turned on, you're present, you're active. And now those two channels of energy, they feed all the primary organs with guess what? Massive amount of energy, massive amount of consciousness, a massive amount of chi, spirit, shen. Mm -hmm. And now once they start getting that, it makes everything else very easy because once the upper brain realizes where it's at in time and space, it can start making really good decisions. On the fifth day, I then teach them how to do what I did to them. So there's no codependent dependent relationship between the client and the practitioner. There's no codependent mm -hmm. relationship between the student and the teacher, right? I'm into interdependent relationships because those are empowered relationships. And then they move into the world. And look, the more they engage what I teach them, the greater the reward is that they reap. So if they put in 20 minutes a day, guess what? They're still moving forward extremely fast in their life. But if they add in another 10 minutes, guess what? They move even faster. And some people, they're not so much into their body. Their mm -hmm. body isn't their thing right? They're very mental. They go through the world and they use their mind to manage their life. Other people, they use their emotions to manage their life. Well, guess what? The mind and the emotions, the energy, it emanates from the center of the body. So once we start sorting out the body, getting the bone rotational relationships in the correct position, diminishing the tension, diminishing the stress, diminishing the emotional distortion, the person becomes more present every day. And when they get to the crossroad where they always make a bad decision and turn left, you know what happens? They get to the crossroad, they turn their head to the right and they go, hey, that looks interesting down there. Let me turn right. And when they turn right, they create a successful pattern interrupt to the pattern that has them in self-defeating behavior, either passively or overtly. Okay. So that's what I do for one thing. The other thing that I do is I teach people how to do what I do. Because for every 8,000 people who are in the world doing a unique thing all at the same time. You know what happens? It creates a paradigm shift for the entire population. So you only need a small number of people in order to create a massive movement. 
And so for me, I'm motivated for an internal revolution because guess what? I've been alive for somewhat 55 years and I've been able to see that external revolutions, guess what? They create the same patterns, mm -hmm. right? You and I are sitting here today on this call. We know what's going on in Ukraine. We know what went on with COVID. We know what's going on with the banking system. We know what's going on with the educational system. And these things have been going on forever and ever and ever. And no matter how much effort we put in to try to neutralize those things, those things resurface every generation. And they need to. You know why? Because we haven't made the internal shift. So what I do is I teach people on an individual level in my five-day process, and I teach them in a group level in order to be able to help other people get free. Free of what? Free of anxiety, free of crippling fear, free of an overactive mind, free of debilitating symptoms, um, free of intense amounts of self-righteousness, and free of discomfort in their body and now imagine if you could move through the world with a comfortable body a quiet mind excited grounded emotions and righteous behavior every single day would be an amazing day every single day would be an amazing day and the truth is 99.9 percent .9 of humans are not walking around that way but the reason why they aren't is it isn't very sophisticated. Mm -hmm. It's simply because their brains are turned off electrically. Their emotional bodies are operating at a very small level. Okay. And their bones are rotated in the wrong directions. So if you get the brain happy, you get the emotional body happy, you get the body aligned. Guess what happens? All the spiritual energy flows through your body unencumbered in the way that it was meant to. And you act in a way that is full of heartfelt action to your own benefit and equally for the benefit of others. And imagine if we had a hundred thousand or a small number relative to the population, a million people walking around the world with comfortable bodies in their fifties, quiet minds, grounded, excited emotions, and intense, abundant amounts of energy. You know what happened? The world would change overnight. So I feel like, I've been given this pathway mm -hmm. in order to be able to teach on an individual, personal, intimate level and at a group level to inspire others to be able to get free for life. Mm -hmm. Free for life. And that is, that's the title of your book. Yeah. Beautiful. So if people are listening to this, they may, you know, you, you mentioned lots of things. You mentioned the Chinese meridians in there. You mentioned some Qigong. You mentioned these different levels they might not quite understand what you're talking about. So I want to put, okay. it, put it into context for people of how you went from being, you know, a super hard charging Navy SEAL to a potential Olympian, which most people can, you know, they've got a picture in their mind of who that is or what that type of person is to the discoveries you made to be able to teach what you teach. So how did that come about? Take us through that journey. Okay. So I call the journey from SEAL to SAGE. <laughs> mm -hmm. Nice. <laughs> Somebody gave me that name yeah. that was a podcaster. He goes, I I I think this is your brand from yeah. Seal the Sage. And at first I was like, what was this guy talking about? And then I thought about it and he's like, yeah, he's actually right. Yeah. So the way that it happened for me was through pain. Right. I had uh just as a listener, so you understand, I was never the guy when I was younger thinking about waking up and changing the world in a positive way. Mm -hmm. I was thinking about going into the world and getting as much as I could for myself and for recognition, right? But all of that was being driven by irrational insecurity, okay? Mm -hmm. So the way that I got from SEAL mindset into SAGE mindset is simple. I had pain in my body and at one point I could never get away from it, right? The middle of my hip was throbbing again and again and again, and whether I was sitting, walking, jumping, hopping, um, skipping, laying down, wherever I was, 
I had this ache and this throb happening. Woo, woo, woo. Mm -hmm. And when you're in debilitating pain like that, you get to the point where you will bend the knee and reach out and ask for help. And because I had that SEAL team mindset, that was going to be the last thing that I was going to do. Right. Because I was I went to a boarding school, and at the boarding school, we were never encouraged. In fact, we were discouraged against complaining and advocating for ourselves. And if you did such a thing at the boarding school that I went to, guess what happened? You got more punishment. So I had 10 years of indoctrination there, and then I had seven years, almost eight years of indoctrination into the SEAL teams. And so when you're there, it's definitely a place that uh, complaining, bitching, and moaning, or what they would call whining, mm -hmm. is frowned upon heavily. Mm -hmm. And so I didn't know that I had a right to advocate for my own pain at an emotional level, at a physical level, at a psychological level, at an energetic level. I had no idea. I was trapped in survival that mm -hmm. I was in a locked into an inappropriate stress state, fight or flight for many, many years. And I was going to continue to keep applying my winning strategy. Well, what, <laughs> what was my winning strategy? Get up and go hard every day, right? If, if I can get up and train harder and be more consistent than my competitors, then guess what? I have a winning strategy for life. And the truth is, it was a limiting belief. So, so pain is what got me out of a SEAL team mindset, right? I had a limiting belief, and a limiting belief is simple. People who work hard, show up consistently, and apply the same strategy every day will eventually get and receive what they want from life. I made up that mindset based on the conditions that were provided for me as an environment, as a child. The truth mm -hmm. is that belief was false. And I had all the proof that it was false because guess what? I was failing at achieving some of my goals. And so my body was the key to help me wake up. And I mm -hmm. sat with a guy, his name was Stephen Bolger, he was a hella worker at the time. What that means is he worked with removing tension and stress from the fascia. The guy that started that school worked with a woman named Ida Rolf, who had a school called Rolfing. Mm -hmm. okay? She had an institute, I believe, in Colorado. And I wrote down on the paper all of my medical history. And he sat down in a room. And the first thing he said to me, he says, who are you? And I um instinctually said i'm an athlete and he turned the paper around and he said on this sheet of paper it says your name is christopher lee maher you might want to think about the answer you gave me and i thought you know what i didn't come here for psychobabble yeah. it actually pissed me off yeah. <laughs> i was angry <laughs> and i realized the only reason why i was angry in 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 retrospect is because he was right I over-identified with being an athlete, right? I got positive recognition from my peers. I got positive recognition from my teachers, from the administrators, from my coaches, from the county that I lived in that I had value, mm -hmm. right? And I was under the false belief that what I did is where my value came from. And when you're raised as a child and your father's not around and, you know, your mother takes her life when she's 29 years old and you bounce around in foster care for a while and then you get dumped off at a boarding school, you know, you, and you finally start to get some positive recognition. Right. You're thinking that who, what you do has more innate value than who you are. Mm -hmm. Cause if who you are had value, no one would have dumped you into the foster care system. Mm -hmm. No one would have dumped you off at a boarding school. If you had value, your family would have taken care of you. Yeah. And so I took those limiting beliefs and ideas that I made up in a, with a precognitive mind that doesn't understand the rational world. And I ran those ideas to their extreme. And that helped me in the end, retrospectively, develop 
what I do today. Because at some point, you have to be willing to hold up the mirror. Yeah. And the mirror, the reflection that was looking back at me said, hey, I'm in pain. And initially, I said, who cares? Keep, keep running. Keep mm-hmm. training hard. And then the mirror said, hey, I'm in pain. And I kept applying it again and again and again until basically my body ground down to a halt. And now I couldn't use the body, which is where I got all of my esteem from. Mm -hmm. And I had outer self-esteem. I didn't have any inner self-esteem, right? Because inner self-esteem has more to do with knowing who you are and implying what I would call intuitive discipline rather than a fixed rigid discipline that's attached to your identity. So then I had to separate from my identity. And when, you know, when I was in the SEAL teams, no, nobody really knew about the SEAL teams, right? right. And then suddenly, you know, the, the name and Navy SEALs and all, all that sort of got mm-hmm. big in the world, mm-hmm. okay? Um, and so now... I was, as I was, the the irony here is as I was growing and separating from my identity, the identity of the SEAL teams was getting bigger. Interesting. Yeah. So so external validation of being a a former SEAL was getting bigger and bigger, and yet you were trying to distance yourself from it. Yeah. Yeah. And so it got to the point where I, when someone would meet me, I would never tell them I, I was a former U.S. Navy SEAL. Yeah. Because I didn't want to be identified with that mindset, right? Mm -hmm. I wanted to be identified as me because I started to understand that who I am without any identity is what has the greatest amount of value because now I'm focused on being, being what? Being kind, being generous, being honest, being open-minded, being funny, uh, being grounded, being empowered, uh, being inspirational. All those things suddenly had more value. And I was talking, if I was in a conversation with someone, it was about how can I help you right? versus let me show you how wonderful I am. It was about Mm -hmm. how can I help you? Tell me what's going on. Mm -hmm. I have some solutions that I think could benefit you a lot. And I shifted from a Mm -hmm. um, self-focused, self-absorbed person into really being much more transpersonal Mm -hmm. right being vested in the other person's growth and life path and that was a better position for me nice so before we get to uh how you do what you do i'm interested in this shift from you know that practitioner the hello work practitioner to some of the other trainings you did. I know you, you, you studied Chinese medicine and I'm really interested if you want to talk about it, you spent 25 days in a cave in the pitch black or something. Can you tell us how that, how you got to that position? Yeah. 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 So one of the guys that I uh, studied with, um, here's how this happened for me. I was working with a lot of practitioners. So I was going to the Gosco clinic in Del Mar, San Diego, Mm -hmm. Uh, I was doing acupuncture, acupressure. I was going to yoga. I was doing hot yoga. I was doing anything and everything that I could to continue to move myself down the road. Mm -hmm. My business at the time was to train people, right? To be physically fit. Right. And then I got an email from a guy named Mark Pershvalaja that I went to boarding school with. And the email said, hey, I saw this guy's got five stretches that'll change your life. And I thought, Mark, why don't you take those five stretches and and stick them straight (laughs) up your rear end and go change your life? Like, who are you to be telling me to change my life? I I had a strong, well-defended ego at the time. Mm -hmm. And then two weeks later, I got a call from my client. She said, hey, I just saw this guy in Good Morning America go, let me guess. He's got five stretches that'll change my life. She goes, you saw the program? I go, no, but I'm getting the point. Mm-hmm. And then I went and I researched and I tracked the guy down. It took me six six months to get a hold of him. Wow. And then he agreed to see me. And I went up and saw him. And within one hour, all the pain that I had at every joint was gone. Wow. So on one end, I was ecstatic, mm-hmm. right? The pain is gone. I'm thinking 
this is great. I can go back. I can train hard again. I got someone who's got real solutions. And now on the other end, I was upset because mm -hmm. I just spent all that time, all that energy, all that effort, and all those resources, mm -hmm. right? And I couldn't get any, I couldn't get any of that back. Um, and then he worked on me for another three days. And then I got to the airport. And when I got to the airport, instead of people avoiding me, they were bumping into me. And I hadn't had that experience since I got out of the SEAL teams. Mm -hmm. Like no one was bumping into me. Like I remember seeing NFL linebackers walking straight towards me. They always stepped out of, out, mm -hmm. out of my way because there was just an intense energy coming off me at all times. Right. I wasn't aware that that's what was coming off of me. Well, when this guy helped remove a massive amount of lifetime accumulated stress out of my body and my brain and my nervous system, guess what happened? My energy changed and suddenly I, I was in a receptive mode, right? Instead of a blocking, restricted, protective mode. Mm -hmm. And in that, in that state of receptivity, when I got on the plane, strangers were wanting to engage me in conversation. I was like, this is so weird. I usually sit on the plane. And as soon as I sit down, people are like moving as far away from me as possible because the energy coming off me is so intense. Yeah. Okay. So once I started learning from this guy, there came a point where, you know, as, as all things happen, you grow beyond your teacher. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I grew beyond him. And when I came home, I said, okay, I need to figure out where all this information came from. So I decided to enter in and go to school. So I signed up for a formal education to study at the Pacific College of Oriental Medicine in San Diego. Mm -hmm. And that's, they started giving me the deep understanding of Chinese meridian theory. And then once I started overlaying all of that with what I was figuring out in concert with all of the other things that I had learned, then I started taking it to a whole new level mm -hmm. because now I understood temperature and I understood what it meant to have your energy being blocked and what the inner outcome of that was as, as pain and discomfort, right? And that there were certain channels of energy and they affected the vision and some affected your hearing and some affected your smell and some affected your digestion. And now I had a map, right? I had a map that I could follow and really get that deep understanding. And so when I was in school, one of my classmates, a guy named Dave, Dave put this sheet about the darkroom training in Chiang Mai, Thailand with a guy named Montak Chia into my student folder. I picked it out. As soon as I saw it said darkroom training, I said, I'm going here. Well, this is when okay. you were, were a kid? No, a no, kid? no. This this was when I was studying traditional oh, Chinese oh, medicine. Not, not, no, not, so, not boarding so, school. Okay. So Dave, right. yeah, yeah. So yeah. Dave was one of my classmates. Okay. Um, at the at um, uh, what school? Not not at Yosan University. At the Pacific, Pacific. College yeah. of, of Oriental Medicine. So I pick it up. As soon as I read it, I know I have to go here. It's just one of those things where you have an intuitive hit. Mm -hmm. I knew that that was part of my life path. I didn't know. I didn't know who Montak Chia was. I didn't know what he did. All I knew is I was supposed to be in Chiang Mai, Thailand. Wow. So rather than look him up and start like entering into his processes, like the the inner smile, the microcosmic orbit, the six healing sounds, I just showed up, right? Mm -hmm. So I show up on the first day I get there, there's 60 people that are jammed into this dark room space. Okay. And suddenly I start getting a toothache and nice. I'm like, Oh my God, I got this like debilitating throbbing. Okay. And I said, what can I do? So I went down to their uh, front office and I said, listen, I'm having this. They gave me a woman's number. Well, somebody from her office came to pick me up. Right. Yeah, I go there. They're working on my tooth. When I go back to the dark room, I get back like 15 minutes before they turn off the lights. So, so you, know, I, you know nothing about what I know happen. nothing and I know no one. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I know nothing and I know no one. And I've thrown myself into the middle of this thing. OK, 
I remember where my room is, right? And I'm like, that's right. That's my room. And so I come out the first morning. I wake up. I wake up super early. Obviously, you can't see your watch because it's complete darkness. So right. when you're there, you have to have an eye mask on. Your eyes have to stay completely closed the entire time, and there's not one photon of light. So everything that I have to do to find out where I'm going initially is with my hands. Mm -hmm. Here's the fascinating thing. In ask me this question. In 30, in 28 days, did I ever bump into one other human being? I don't know. Did you? Never. Never happened, right? Because all these other heightened senses turned on. Yeah. And what was really wild is at the 72 hour mark, I felt this click out of the corner of each of my eyes. It literally, you can hear it. It goes click, click. And there was like these two little flashlights that turned on out of the corner of each of my eyes, right? Uh -huh. The outer canthus right there. Boom. And he takes us through a meditation called walking through the door of all wonder. Wow. I'm like, what is this guy talking about? Walking through the door of all wonder. <laughs> okay, here we go. He goes, imagine and see a door in front of you. And boom. In my third eye was a door. He goes, reach out and turn the handle. I turn the handle and suddenly I walk into like a living room. There's people eating off to my left. I was like, I obviously turn. <laughs> this is not the right door for me. <laughs> And I kept walking through the room. I said, I got to get out of here. And I opened up another door and opened up another door. And finally, I opened up a door and I look over my shoulder and planet Earth is behind me. And in front of me that's standing here is this, um, this presence called Draco. And he said, I am the keeper of the Zodiac. And let me show you how a soul falls to Earth. And he took me on his three-day journey. So whether I'm in the shower, right? Whether yeah. I'm in a meditation with Montauk Chia or I'm doing my own stretching, right? Guess what? This guy's talking to me the whole time. And so I'm, I'm in this world physically, yeah. right? Auditorily um, with all of my senses. And yet the only thing that I'm seeing and hearing is this guy. Like a and spirit, he shows me the process. Guide. Yeah. He yeah. shows me the process of what it takes in order for a soul to fall to earth. And I was like, and then that's how the journey started. And that went on for 28 days. And did you speak to Mon Montuk uh, Shea about this? Yeah, yeah. Afterwards, they yeah. filmed me, They, which is funny. They filmed me for like three hours. They were like, you got to tell us. We got to catch this on film. So, of course, I put it all on film, but because he's worried at the time about how the Western world is going to receive this, he cuts out all the really amazing stuff. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. It's a shame. It's like, are you kidding me? Like, yeah. So you cut out all the really good juicy stuff, like the yeah. stuff that actually matters. You left that out because you're scared of Western projection about the experience or I think maybe at the same time, he was worried that if other people knew about my experience and they weren't having that, they yeah. would feel like they were ripped off. Yeah. Or well, they might right? come, in, come in the future expecting that. That's right. Like yeah. that, that's their expectation. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, but there's an interview on the internet of me talking about the darkroom experience. Wow. That's pretty On cool. YouTube somewhere. Somewhere, somewhere. <laughs> Someone can find it. What you have to understand is as you raise your core vibration, you will see and feel things that other humans don't because your vibration is higher. Mm -hmm. When it's higher, you get a gift. The gift is you get to see and feel things that other people don't, or you get like a regular journey. Okay. So if I, oh, would I rather be Jeff Bezos with $240 billion or would I've traded in every cent? In order to have that experience, I would much rather have the experience that I had because all the money in the world, whatever position you have, none of that gives you direct access into the things that we're talking about, right? You have to work on your health. Right. You got to raise your core vibration. You have to have a better diet. You have to have a really good lifestyle. Mm -hmm. And my lifestyle at that time is what afforded me that opportunity, right? I fasted for 44 days. OK, most people aren't going to wake up one morning and go, OK, I'm going to start a 44 day fast. Mm -hmm. But I did as my guides told me. Mm -hmm. 
right? As they guided me, but it all happened because I started opening up my body and shedding and getting out of a survival-based strategies. When you're operating in an inappropriate stress state, you do not have access to higher levels of consciousness. So you're forced into a position to struggle, right? Struggle and strife is the name or is the lane that you're in. But if you want to be in ease and grace and get access to higher levels of consciousness, you have to do something that's extraordinary. If you're doing the everyday Joe or Jane business, that's what you're going to get for a life. Mm -hmm. I took a risk, right? The risk was, I'm in pain. I'm going to reach out and ask for help. And whoever I get help from, I'm going to be extremely gracious, kindful, and mindful. And then I'm going to ask for the next level of help. And I'm going to stay vested and focused until I have resolved the discomfort that my body is in, until I get my vision back, mm -hmm. until I get my hearing back. And until I can make a good decision with the time, energy, effort, and resources that I have that are in alignment with my own unique set of ethics, morals, values, and principles. And I put in the time. I took a risk. Look, most people aren't going to take that risk, right? Mm -hmm. Because the average day life feels good to them, right? I took the average day belief systems and I ran them to their edge and I found which ones are false and which ones are true. And so the opportunity for the listener is to go, hmm, you know what? I want an extraordinary life. What do I got? What, what do I need to adjust in my lifestyle in order to get that, right? If you're eating, you know, poor quality food, good luck. You're never going to have one of the experiences that I just shared with you, mm -hmm. okay? Right. But if you're eating high quality food, right, if you're going to see your osteopath on a semi regular mm -hmm. basis, if you're going to see your acupuncturist on a semi regular basis, if you're removing tension and stress and distortion for your body, brain and nervous system, if you're getting quality sleep, if you're repairing the brain damage that was done to you from your addiction to the daily drugs, caffeine, nicotine, alcohol, refined sugars, recreational drugs, pharmaceutical drugs, right? You got a shot at experiencing something really powerful. But if well, all you really want is to be happy, happy is easy, right? Happy simple. Mm -hmm. All you got to do is reduce your lifetime accumulated stress by 30 to 50 percent and you're going to be happier than anyone that you know or have ever known okay wow i mean what it's like you've you've had this religious experience where mm -hmm. you've you've joined your own sort of seminary or, or, or monastery and put yourself through your own uh rites of passage that yep. other 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 sort of cultures and religions have these things built in and they're more sort of systematized and so on but you've you've discovered this for yourself yep. so so what so how do you do it now like there's different aspects to how you work with a person can you okay. talk about those yeah like let, let's say some people come oh, how do we say this the people who find me now are people who've been through the system whether it's uh, allopathic or traditional or new age and they haven't received a result that they want mm -hmm. right they put a lot of time they put a lot of energy they put a lot of effort in and they've read my book and they read my book and they're like chapter one yep check mark mm -hmm. check mark check mark check mark like my story resonates with them in fact yeah. every person who's or read matches. my book yeah. yeah matches right yeah. and they say to me listen it's as if you were talking to me yeah. And I'm like, oh my goodness, this is great. So then we get on the phone and they figure out a way to come see me. And most of them have had a result that was unsatisfactory. And I get it. Like I deal with everything from physical pain to emotional distortion, right? So repression, depression, um, anything that keeps a person from shining their light. Like they know at one point in their life, things felt kind of good. Mm -hmm. And now they're on this, they're, they're tr their train track is on track X. And what they want is to get it back on track A. Mm -hmm. 
because track A is their soul track, right? Track X is their negatively conditioned personality track. Mm-hmm. And they don't want to be on that track anymore. I mean, the, the challenge is, is that all the conditions that they're dealing with are very complex. <laughs> the funny thing, the laughable thing is that the solution is always the same. Doesn't matter what they're dealing with. Right. You've got to reduce your lifetime accumulated stress load. Yeah. hundred percent. Right. You've got your daily stress. Like, think about it like this, right? You've got three, three lanes. You've got stress, ignorance. Obviously your listeners are not in the stress ignorance category. Mm-hmm. You got stress management inside of stress management. You got positive stress management tools, but you also have negative stress management tools. Right. And then you got stress resolution. I literally take up the lion's share of stress resolution because I have figured out the scientific strategy around true transformation. And it's very simple. It's so easy. I could literally do it in my sleep. Wow. But you, you right? also, you, you use like the Sha King, you use the uh, machine. Um, the Bester size. Yeah. Yeah. So you, yeah. You, you use these four tools, but you apply yeah, I, them individually. I, yeah. Okay, I teach five. Oh, five. Okay, but I really use about seven. Okay. I could literally, to be honest with you, I could create or co-create a, a new personal development or healing or growth process every single week. Mm. Because I sit there and I listen. I take instruction. I'm okay. I, you know, I might have a plan and, and, you know, source is like, that's not the right plan. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Do this first. Okay. Boom, 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 boom. And we create a miracle. Can you share with us uh, an example of one of your clients coming to you, going through the program and the shift and the change that's happened with them? Yeah. um, Okay. Uh, Let's see. A woman came to see me who's a doctor, a medical professional. Mm -hmm. Okay. And she basically been stuck in bed for 15 years. Wow. Like, okay. 15 years stuck in bed raised her children in bed okay and um she had a little bit of trepidation on investing the time and the energy and the effort and coming to see me Mm -hmm. because she'd been down a pathway and done everything she possibly could she looked under every rock and every stone and there were no there were no serious solutions so no one knew why she was stuck in bed no one knew why right they 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 she passed all the tests right the blood looks good uh all the other diagnostic tools that they use they reflected back to her that she was fine actually okay but she knew her energy was too low and when i looked and started studying her chart right her birth chart Mm -hmm. i realized this woman was get by by source by the universe she was given an intense amount of energy so she's the last person that should be feeling like this Mm -hmm. And so what's going on? And so after we did the investigation, we found out an oversight that she had about something that she experienced when she was, when she was younger. Mm. And um, once we transmuted that experience and the negative projections around that, guess what happened? She got her energy back, right? So she sends me a text every day, Mm. checks in where, where you at? I'm not in bed. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> She's out and about doing her thing. Is she at full throttle yet? No, but she can rely on the energy that she has. She's coachable. She takes the steps that are necessary. And guess what? She's out having a functional life again. And nobody understands what it's like to not have energy, right? Especially when you're someone who grew up highly energetic. Mm-hmm. It's different if you, you were born and you were always low energy right? Yeah. You just figure you don't know anything else. But when you're born high energy, and then one day you wake up, and you're in your 40s, and suddenly all of your energy is gone. And none of it makes any sense. And you're a doctor. So you've, you know, you're in the medical establishment, mm-hmm. you, you know what to do. And you're not getting any answers. And you're not getting any result from the answers that you're getting then guess what happens? You begin to reach out and search and she reached and she searched and she reached and she searched and she reached and she searched and she she kept coming up empty. 
right? That's that's correct. And it must have been a lot for her as a medical professional to reach out to oh, to you, for sure. Yeah, who's alternative? Yeah, yeah, right. I'm more in traditional medicine, right? Yeah, and and so um, the thing about me is a lot of people. I work with a lot of PhDs, a lot of diplomats, a lot a lot of people that are scientifically educated mm -hmm. and trained, right? And so when they come to me, they have ideas about what we're talking about. But right. the thing is, everything that I do is based on science, right? So it's very, I set it up so it's verifiable mm -hmm. and it's repeatable. Mm -hmm. It's verifiable and it's repeatable by anyone. And so when they come in after the first day, like for instance, the Surgeon General was here, right? Right. And he was having some challenges and his wife thought it was a good idea for him to come see me. And he begrudgingly came and uh, we have a powerful relationship and he employed the strategies that I taught him. He made some very significant lifestyle changes and he sends me a text every day to how grateful he is wow. and his whole life shifted and changed. And so, um, I got another doc that, you know, graduated from UCSD, came to see me, was suffering from debilitating states of, of um, anxiety and depression and all kinds of things. And I taught him what I would teach to a professional athlete, right? I taught him what I would teach to a professional saxophone player, mm -hmm. right? That's what I'm saying. The solution is always the same. Mm -hmm. Remove the tension, stress, and distortion. Turn on the upper brain electrically. Turn on the emotional body. Reduce the, the tension stored in the emotional channels. Get the person physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually present. And you know what happens to their symptoms? They disappear. Disappear. Yeah. They disappear because the person's present and aligned. But who are they aligned to? They're aligned to who they are in nature. I define success very, really simply as success can only be defined as your ability to be authentically expressed as you were designed. Yeah. And if you are, if you're inauthentic, you will have pain mm -hmm. in any place in your life. If you're inauthentic, you will have a symptom. Maybe your symptoms, it's a headache. Mm -hmm. Maybe your symptom is excruciating menstrual cramps. Mm -hmm. Maybe your symptom is insomnia. Maybe your symptom is low back stiffness. Maybe your symptom is a foggy mind. All of it points to one thing, inauthentic expression of self. But what's the only thing that can make that happen? A precognitive mind, um, a precognitive state of mind that a child has makes up things about reality that are false. And you continue to let those false beliefs govern your choices in life. And the more you do that, the more you put your nervous system into a state of fight or flight. Because what's every child looking to get? They're looking to receive love and affection. Well, let's flip it to the inverse. What are they wanting to avoid? Punishment, rejection, humiliation, violence, discomfort, and shame, mm -hmm. right? That's what they're looking to avoid. So if you are in an environment and you have a parent that is intimidating, or punishing in any fashion, you're going to adopt a strategy that allows you to avoid that parent's rejection, punishment, humiliation, violence, pain, shame, guilt, right? And death. And children, guess what? Children make up things about reality that are false, right? And I imagine I got a 55-year adult that's showing up to me that has this, this debilitating symptom that's taken over their life, whether it's, you know, uh, any form of addiction, yeah. right? Where that's sex addiction, all kinds of things. And guess what happens? It all comes about because of the precognitive beliefs, irrational beliefs of a child. Mm -hmm. So, so we have to investigate. We got to locate, like, where's this coming from? Like, I see the symptom, yeah. right? I, I don't even want, I don't even want to put too much of a spotlight on the symptom. Let's get down to how you got here. Mm -hmm. What were your mom and dad like? What, 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 what are the things that they went through that mm -hmm. you know about? And every time, you know what it comes back to? 
every single time. You know what it comes back to? Mom and dad. Oh. Right? Yeah. Because mom and dad are who handed you your genetics and epigenetics, right? Mm -hmm. And mom and dad who set up the environment. Every once in a while, guess what? It's an uncle or a neighbor or a teacher. Somebody broke their boundaries inappropriately, either physically, psychologically, emotionally, energetically, or um, sexually. Mm -hmm. Okay? And this adult is allowing this the irrational beliefs of a precognitive child to govern and run their life. And guess what that creates? That creates emotional distortion, psychological distortion, physical tension, and energetic and psychological stress. And so we got to go back. We got to go back to the beginning. Yeah. And then guess what happens? A, a doctor that is suffering from, um, I guess what they would term it would be uh, adrenal fatigue, mm -hmm. suddenly starts to get their energy back. Mm -hmm. Because you've gone back to the source, the environment, the first seven years is crucial. And anyone that suffered any bit of stress during that time, it's going to play out in their adult years. Mm -hmm. Right? Like name someone who got bullied. Right, I had a guy in here like a couple weeks ago. He didn't think it 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 affected him at all. Right, right. Bunch of kids dumped him into a dumpster. Okay, humiliated right. him in front of the other students. That was impacting his life. Why? Because every time he was in a room with another man, he was always quiet and sheepish. Mm -hmm. Why? Because his precognitive psyche aspect of his mind is thinking they could dump me in a dumpster right in front of all of these other people mm -hmm. at this workshop i should probably sit in the back and be quiet mm -hmm. and so the things that we go through as children if they're if they go without proper investigation or attention they run amok and so we got to heal the things that made us feel unsafe as a child Right. We have to grow beyond those experiences. And then suddenly the symptoms, they shrink every shrink. month. They get a little smaller and a little mm -hmm. smaller and a little smaller. And it's like I said at the beginning of our call, when you get to that crossroad and you can turn left and that's your strategy always, I'm, I'm going to move into avoidance. Suddenly you're taking heartfelt, appropriate action. You're taking right action to your benefit. You're going right. And now you've built a new neural pathway and your brain recognizes nice. into your authentic self versus your preconditioned adopted strategy to avoid punishment, rejection, humiliation, violence, discomfort, and pain. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, that, that, the, for, the how are you going to experience freedom ever mm -hmm. if your precognitive state of mind, that aspect of your psyche is running amok yeah. and acting out? Whenever it can, and look, people don't act out if they're not stressed, mm -hmm. right? Because their conscious mind is able to operate correctly. But the moment, the, the second the moment gets too big, the precognitive child looks over the edge and goes, hey, I can start acting out. I have permission. Yeah. I feel unsafe. <laughs> and so the key is to get the person feeling safe again, yeah. right? Yeah. That's, I mean... Or everything you're saying there, you've you've put it in so succinctly that there is, you know, complementary alternative medicine. The world that I'm in, we talk about pain being a gift, and for a lot of our patients, that they don't want to hear that because pain is not a gift, but it is because the pain is telling you something that's out of alignment in your body, being being physical alignment, spiritual alignment, emotional alignment, and what you're doing is taking that symptom as sort of like a, a flag to follow that that flag to find out where it's coming from and i think you you summarize that what, what how you do it brilliantly thank you thank you and look here's here's the truth the truth is because of my study and my education and it's been unique i know exactly where those behaviors live in the body mm -hmm. right passive aggressiveness where does it live in it lives in the chest right um where does addiction live? It lives in the quadriceps. Where does narcissism live? It lives in the hamstrings. 
Where does self-sacrifice live? It lives in the hamstring. Like, like wherever the, you know what I mean? So, so, so. That's got tight hamstrings. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Right. Self, self-sacrifice, I can see the yeah. narcissism. Well, yes. I'm not going to admit that one, but maybe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. And so when you, because I know where these behaviors live and during the investigation process, guess what happens? They then tell me their two strongest negative projections about their parents. And when they do that, they're telling me exactly which muscles in their body are super, super tight. Nice. They're telling me exactly where to focus based on the positive projections they have of their parents and mm-hmm. the negative projections. Mm-hmm. So I trick them into, right? Mm-hmm. I, I call it the hustle, right? It's like, right. you're going to reveal to me. And guess what? This is how you've been hustling yourself. So the second they go, look, you know, my projection about my mom is that she is, um, she's mean and disorganized. I already know that the person's upper body and the shoulders are going to be severely lifted high and rotated forward before they even get in the door. Okay. And as soon as they walk in the door, I go, okay, yeah, exactly what you said. It matches. So, mm-hmm. so for the listener, what you have to understand is whatever's in your body is in your life. No one is above their station, no matter how well they pretend, mm-hmm. right? Their body's telling you everything. Okay. If the shoulders are high and rotated forward, they're already telling you what part they're telling you what their environment was like that they were raised in. And they're showing you what their strategy for success is simultaneously. And I'm reconfirming that with their projections about their mom and their dad. Mm -hmm. Your projections are telling me everything. And then I go through the, the part of the investigation. I'm like, okay, let's hold up the mirror. (laughs) <laughs> what do you see right and then they're like oh i do that too now they have ownership the moment they yeah. have ownership guess what the energy it already starts it already yeah. starts on unraveling it already yeah. starts evacuating because they've admitted it to another person right in the bible it says where two or more are gathered i am there but what it means is something very different Where two or more are gathered in consciousness, the presence is present. Mm -hmm. And so when I admit to another human that I have the faults that my parents have, if I take ownership of that, now there's no need for me to hide. There's no need for me to employ a strategy, okay, Mm -hmm. to try to get affection and love. I don't have to tap, tap dance for my dinner anymore. I've already admitted that I'm obsessive and narcissistic. When I can admit that, now I no longer have to uphold it. Because guess all the body wants? All the body wants is love and affection. All it wants to know is that you care. And when you give it the affection and the love, and you admit openly that, look, I'm imperfect, it says, thank God. Mm -hmm. Thank you for admitting that. Now I don't have to punish my parents. I don't have to ignore my mom's calls. I don't have to avoid my father, right? Right. I don't have to pretend like my dad's perfect and my mom's an evil witch, Mm -hmm. right? I don't have to pretend like my dad's a, he's a, he's a narcissistic bastard and my mom is an angel. Mm -hmm. All humans are flawed and perfect simultaneously because it's reflective and it's relative. The moment you make the choice, that I want to change, you have to take prudent action. What does that mean? You need to find an osteopath. You need to find an acupuncturist. You need to find somebody like me that will help you reduce your lifetime accumulated stress so you can reduce your addiction to the daily drugs, which is what I call stress management tools. Mm -hmm. Caffeine, nicotine, alcohol, refined sugar, food colorings, preservatives, recreational and pharmaceutical drugs. And if you can reduce those, now you got a shot at being free to experience who it is you really are. But how are you going to know who you really are if all you're doing is continuing to pass along 
the inner deficiencies, insecurities, limiting beliefs and fears of your parents. How are you going to do that? Mm -hmm. You're not. It's a lie. It's a falsehood. Okay. If you think you can lay on someone's massage table and they can rub oil on you and that's going to be a solution, you have seriously been effectively fooled by the alternative community. Mm -hmm. Anything worth having takes a little bit of work and effort. And if you're willing to put in that time, that energy, that effort, and use your symptoms as clues to where your problems lie, and you're willing to hold up a mirror and have an honest conversation with yourself that you need help, and then you're going to take heartfelt action to your own benefit, you're going to benefit. Mm -hmm. Look, when I started out, I ended up with a bunch of people, they were caring and they were loving, but they didn't really know much. Mm -hmm. But the truth is they were caring and loving and they were coming from a good place. Yeah. But did they have the tools that could resolve the level of stress and trauma that I had in my body? Not for two seconds. They couldn't. The tool was not strong enough. It was not big enough. I needed a sledgehammer. They brought a screwdriver to work. Yeah. I did the best I could with the screwdriver mm -hmm. and I learned. So when you get on the healing journey, when you get on the growth journey, when, when you get on the soul journey, everyone that you meet along the way is giving you value yeah. of what you're looking for is big tools for, and you want to get free. You need to find somebody that is focused on helping people achieve freedom, but also focus on achieving freedom themselves. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if someone wants to take the next step on this journey, how would they find you, Christopher? The easiest way to find me is to go to truebodyintelligence.com. Mm -hmm. You would email us at support at truebodyintelligence.com. And the truth is, I don't talk to anybody unless they've read the book. So right. you've got to be willing to at least take a tiny risk. Right? Yeah. And if you're willing to do that, I'm willing to get <laughs> on the phone with you yeah. and, and, and talk this out. See if I could add some value, at least give you some direction. Even if you choose and you have no interest in working with me, I will get on the phone with you yeah. and I will talk to you. If you're willing to step up to your own benefit. Excellent. Okay. I think that's a great place to finish. We now know how to find you. And um, I would re totally recommend your book. I read your book. And if people want to find a solution to something that they haven't yet figured out that no one seems to be helping with, I think Christopher is going to be a perfect next step for you. So get his book and then give him a call. The offer's there. Yeah, the offer's there. Perfect. All right. Well, thank you very much. Thank you very much for your time today. You're so welcome. I'm so happy to be here. We had a great conversation. I loved every second of it. That Thank you awesome. so much. Thank you for joining me in my conversation with Christopher from the seal to the sage. If you joined listening to this podcast, please leave a comment or suggestion for a future guest uh, that you would like to see featured. In addition, on Apple, you can leave me a five-star review and leave me a comment if you wish. If you want my direct help in anything, send me an email ed at edpaget.com or visit my website edpaget.com and lastly certainly not least thank you for your interest in lifestyle medicine